<laughs> wow, too. Yeah, I got yeah, a gift from our other uh, cousin that about this stuff, so. Everybody, I'm Matt. I'm Jimmy. We're two average guys, and we are joined today by Des Moines Adams, uh, class of 2002, correct? Yeah. At the University yes. of Nebraska Lincoln. Um, so he, he played with a lot of great, uh, great Husker athletes, and um, he's going to talk to us a little bit about Husker football today. But um, before we do that, we're going to focus on some of his personal life and <laughs> him coming to Nebraska and what yes. he's doing now with his life. Um, we think he's got a pretty important story to tell about coming from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, to Nebraska. So, um, Des Moines, welcome to the show. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, you're coming down from Lincoln. Hey, you're coming up from Lincoln, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice setup you guys got. Appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I say Jimmy tries. It's his house. That's so. right. <laughs> There's a lot going on down here. Well, good. So, um, so you and I talked a little bit this past week about, yeah. uh, I was doing some training for work on REI, so, uh, race, I think, ethnicity and inclusion and talking about um, kind of the backstory of American history. And so when yeah. I brought that up, you really wanted to know a little bit more about what I thought. And yeah. so you mentioned, I think I got a good story to talk about on your show about coming from Pine Bluff, Arkansas to Nebraska. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about that, your recruitment process, what you made you choose Nebraska, and what was it like coming from Pine Bluff to Lincoln? You know, interesting. Uh, so coming to Nebraska was an unpopular choice you know for some odd reason um, no one quite understood why am I going so far away why am I going to Nebraska where there are no black people and you know why Nebraska you know why not SEC or Baylor or some of these other schools that were recruiting me uh, for one it was a no-brainer Nebraska was the number one team in the country that year right uh, so I was very, very fortunate uh, to even get recruited by a team like Nebraska. Um, and as a first-generation student, a person, uh, you know, um, just the opportunity to go to college on a football scholarship. Um, I would say a couple of key factors, you know, Tom Osborne um, was a super cool guy. Uh, Turner Gill actually was the one that would kind of come down and sneak in the stands okay. and come okay. watch me and, and, you know, give their report back. Got to know Turner Gill, which is cool, uh, pretty cool. I played linebacker and defensive end, and at the time, uh, Nelson Barnes was the Russian coach. So those are two black coaches right there. And then just following Nebraska my senior year, um, seeing that Nebraska – Although, you know, the state may be majority white, there are other black players. They even discovered uh, Eric Warfield was from uh, Texarkana, Arkansas. Yep. So that yep. got me pretty excited. So <laughs> when I took my visit to Nebraska, he was actually my host. Okay. And, oh, then, cool. and then that's when I was able to, to really see the football team. And it was like a family. I mean, you had blacks, you had whites, you had Hawaiians. I, I mean, it was very diverse, and it felt like a place that I could, you know, see myself for the next five years. Okay. And so, uh, even though my uh, grandparents at the time didn't understand the decision because it was so far, and uh, even a lot of other folks, because they knew Nebraska academically was a, a pretty... Um, pretty sound school academically and you know I wasn't the best student so um, had a lot of doubters a lot of haters a lot of people that questioned it but you know I made that decision uh, based on the opportunity that it provided me the resources um, I saw a coaching staff that I felt I could relate to um, coach Osborne was a really cool head coach and although he was retired he even brought Frank Sellers down there for me to introduce um, you know, to introduce them to me. But knowing that there are other coaches, other players, um, I didn't really get distracted so much about going to a place where there would be majority, you know, not 
see what it looked like when, so to speak. Um, and it was a great experience. Um, but but yeah, um, yeah, definitely the the whole um, inclusive training, so to speak. Uh, it, it it just um, yeah, it's one of those buzzwords that you know whenever you have an environment where you feel you know like you feel like you belong, um, values and, and, and beliefs, etc. Nebraska did that for me. And I give a lot of credit to Coach Osborne, his leadership, and just um, how important he knew that was for players like me who came from, you know, predominantly black environments, first generation. Um, he did a great job by creating an inclusive environment for players like me to not just be a football player, but to get a degree. So, so you mentioned, you know, you mentioned Osborne and, and Solich. Um, obviously, individuals that didn't look like you and your family. What was that pitch like to your parents? Um, or I guess I don't know your yeah. your history, your parents, your grandparents. Like, what was that pitch like? Again, you mentioned they weren't really on board, but what did that look like? You know, the angle was getting that degree. You know, um, he, he talked a little bit about football. He didn't make any promises about me being a starter or going to the NFL. He did, you know, say, hey, here's our record. Number of championships <laughs> and yep. conference championships. But he did uh, make more of a promise toward your your son, your grandson, will, will leave our university with a college degree. Okay. And I think for my mom, my dad, my grandparents, that was definitely more important than the idea of just playing football. Of course, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, once I get there, this, this is about football. It's about setting myself up to go to the NFL. And a degree was important, but like I say, at the time, school was not a priority. I was one of those kids that watched the NFL, played Super Tecmo Bowl, and I, <laughs> I wanted to picture myself playing myself on a video game one day. Uh, but it was that education pitch that really sold my folks. And when I came to Nebraska, they realized that, yeah, Nebraska was a really good choice because not only did they get to see me play on TV because all of the games came on TV, but I left there not just with one degree, but two degrees. So before we obviously started, you were telling us a little bit about your early struggles um, in the classroom. Or, um, you know, if you want to kind of touch base on that and kind of talk about how that came about and how you turn the corner on that. Well, and, and, may, and maybe how it relates to the 18, 19, the 18, 17, yeah, 18 year olds sure. coming into college now. It, now is a lot different than 1998. Yeah. So your struggles and how you think it relates to the young student athletes coming into the program now. You know, I, I hate to say it, but in high school, I could get away by getting by by doing the bare minimum. And so I carried this same habit into my first semester of college. Lo and behold, those professors weren't taking a role. So whether I showed up or not, they didn't really care. No. Uh, here I am now. I'm a grown man. And, um, you know, I didn't understand taking notes. You know, um, we didn't have assignments every week. We may have two midterms and a final and papers. And uh, lo and behold, after that first semester, after – you know, just adjusting to this freedom, partied a little bit, but you know, we lived in the dorms, Keo Craver was my roommate, and we just had fun. But it was not fun and funny when I got a 1.6, <laughs> you know, at the end of that first semester, because um, all I needed, all football players needed was a 2.0 to be eligible. Okay. So I was put on not only academic probation, but my scholarship. I mean, so that spring semester, I had to get it together. So I didn't like it. And, you know, uh, Dennis LeBlanc, he was my uh, advisor. And um, a lot of players would say Dennis was tough. And, of course, uh, Dennis, he made me every night study hall. He, he would send some of his advisors to spy on me in class and make sure that I was in class. Um, and he even told my parents – my grandparents, kind of where I was, all on the speakerphone. Everyone's right there as he's sharing with them that I'm flunking out. So it's pretty embarrassing. 
And of course, no one likes to be held accountable, but that's what I needed to be responsible. And so that 1.69, I had to retake classes and take more classes. I had, actually I had to take 18 credit hours just to make sure that I finished that first year with 30 credit hours because of Dennis LeBlanc, your resources, being held accountable. Uh, that 1.6 became a 3.6. That's incredible. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. That's I, I mean, I wasn't a student athlete, but started my freshman year with a 1.6. I only ended up with a 3.0, and that's not as a student <laughs> athlete. So I was proud of myself. So yeah. if you did, you know, 3.6 to turn around that quick, I mean, that's yeah. pretty incredible as a student athlete. Yeah. And, you know, uh, still to this day, I, I didn't really consider myself a good student. I was a hard worker. I took advantage of the resources. They gave me tutoring for any classes I needed. And at that time, I had to take advantage of the tutoring, the study hall, um, meet with Dennis LeBlanc once a week, take this little paper, like every quarter, every two to three weeks, so professors can write down what, what my grade was to turn in. But once I realized, wow, for the first time in my life, 3.6, guess what I did my sophomore year? I actually put myself in study hall. I took advantage of the tutors, even though I didn't need them. I told them, hey, still hold me accountable like you did, you know, when I was on probation. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in my life, I actually got a 4.0 that first semester of my sophomore year. So you started taking notes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, that's really cool. That's yeah. incredible. That, 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 that's incredible. And something else, kind of backtrack a little bit. You mentioned when you came from Pine Bluff that uh, talking about people that didn't look like you yeah. and and getting used to that and how that had an impact on you. You mentioned to me on the phone this last week about Chris Kelsey, how he's somebody who kind of took you under his wing. Tell us about that relationship that you built with him, that you built with him. And you mentioned one other player, I can't remember his name, uh, but you mentioned one other guy that they really were kind of mentors to you and kind of took you under the wing to get you used to Nebraska and the culture around the Lincoln and the city and yeah. everything. Yeah, you know, uh, Chris Kelsey and I, we came in at the same time. Uh, Chad Kelsey was a senior. Okay, yep. And so, uh, we were, of course, both Russians, and uh, we, we all lived in the dorm. Um, also, uh, man, uh, other guys, um, uh, Jamie Burrow, and, uh, you know, they all just – we just became brothers. You know, we spent so much time on the field, off the field, it was natural for us to go to a movie or grab some Amigos or, or something like that. And, um, you know, to me, I didn't feel like they saw color. To me, I felt like they saw their brother. We all treated, treated each other like brothers, and um, that's when I realized, you know, Skin color, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're black, white. Um, I came in with a guy, Tony Tata, from uh, Hawaii. And, uh -huh. I mean, you know, uh, I felt like I, I belonged. You know, I didn't feel like they were judging me or, you know, perceiving me to be this, stere this stereotypical, you know, black football player. I was their brother. And so, you know, I give a lot of credit to, you know, uh, those guys, uh, Jeremy Slecta, you know, who also mm -hmm. played his freshman year, um, and just to, just to all all of the other players that you know didn't look like me. Still to this day, Chris Kelsey is my brother. You know, um, Kyle Vandenbosch, Chad Kelsey. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Jamie Burrow. Um, and so you know, when everything was going down in 2020 with all of the riots and everything, you know, it was hard for me to you know, I guess to to hate, you know, people that didn't look like me because I had brothers that didn't look like me, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so, you know, um, I think for me, just my experience at Nebraska gave me a different perspective, uh, gave me a different heart. And so I am who I am today because of the way Nebraska's program was shaped uh, to be inclusive, and it really helped me to be the person that I am today and, and my heart um, to be what it is as well. That's awesome. That's really cool. That's kind of why we do this. You know, we like to have these types of conversations with people that have been in the program and, you know, it 
it's uh, really cool to talk to people like you and just get that insight. It's really cool. Yeah. And probably leads into what you're doing now. So you do, yeah. you work with teammates, so you talk about Tom recruiting you, and then you work with teammates, and now you're doing some motivational speaking. So what are you doing now? Tell us a little bit about when you got to teammates and what you're doing now. I know you're not there anymore, but yeah. uh, what are you doing now, and how's your life turned around? Yeah. How Tom recruited you twice? You said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you know, um, Tom recruited me in 97. Uh, I, uh, that was my senior year. Graduated in 98, and that's when he retired. So after the national championship, mm -hmm. um, my first year was under Frank Selvich. I uh, didn't get to play for Tom, but yet we went to a bowl game every year. I mean, had a lot of success uh, in Nebraska. Um, didn't get drafted, so ended up, you know, going a, a kind of a non-traditional route. Went to play a year and a half in uh, the Canadian Football League with the Edmonton Eskimos, and then yeah. mid-season, um, Green Bay Packers. Uh, they were looking for special team, someone with speed, and so ended up um, finishing the season with the Packers. Then um, Mike Sherman, he got fired, so I had to find another home. Did a little arena football, and then had an opportunity with the Titans. And eventually, you know, things didn't work out, and ended up with the 49ers for a little bit, more arena football, and then ended up with Omaha Beef. So Omaha Beef was my last rodeo, and that's when I realized at the age of 28, you know, this is actually somewhat old, too old for the NFL. And just the hustle and bustle. And um, that's when I decided it's time for me to get a real job. So because of my relationships at the university with Dennis LeBlanc and just, you know, the life skills that Keith Zimmer helped me with, having a resume, got my first job at the university. So did that from 2008 to 2011 and then, um, it ended up moving up to Omaha, where I spent about six months with the Omaha Public School District Office. Okay. Then Tom Osborne <laughs> recruited me to be a part of his other team, teammates. And that's yeah. when he was looking to expand teammates, grow it, uh, create more scholarships, and take mentoring to the college level, which I totally agree that, you know, teammates serve third through 12th graders but also college students. And so when I started with teammates in 2012, that's when we took it to the college level. Because oh, cool. if you think about retention, so to speak, only 68% of students make it to their second year. And I could have been one of those students. <laughs> you know, my grandma was easily saying, oh baby, just come back home. You know, <laughs> you can go to a school that's close. Because when you're first generation, sometimes, you know, those that did not have to go through, um, I guess, what it takes. Um, and I get it. My grandma was wanting to be protective and making sure that, you know, I wasn't feeling like a failure or, or fail. But yet, I'm glad that I learned resiliency. I'm glad that I learned grit and just all of the other things that uh, Dennis and everyone else taught me. And so with that, I understood how important it would be for other students like me that go through teammates to have that mentor to push, to say, hey, don't quit, don't give up. Did you talk to your professor? Did you see tutoring? And, and so in my head, my own experiences, I felt I could really help those mentors uh, to help those students. And I did teammates for almost eight years, and then great opportunity came up for me at the University of Nebraska Foundation. Mm -hmm. And so, as, as hard as it was, as, as much as I disappointed Coach Osborne and, uh, and, and, and many others. Uh, and Jackie. And yeah. Jackie. Very sad that you left. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was a great opportunity because here, here, here's an opportunity for me to secure resources to a place that gave me the opportunity to get my education, mm -hmm. improve the quality of my life, and to connect with so many donors. I mean... It's been incredible. I mean, I've been with the foundation now for a year and a couple months. Okay. And same experience, like when I came to Nebraska to play for the Huskers, feels like family. And so, um, yeah, um, speaking wise, um, when I moved back to Nebraska in 2008, and I'm just like, I felt like I was a 22 year old, just starting my life. Someone asked me that million dollar question. If you could do something for the rest of your life and get paid for it, what would it be? 
and I thought about it and thought about my experiences with FCA, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, yep. and uh, spent a lot of time doing it when I was a college student, giving talks and presentations, sharing my testimony. I said, you know, I wouldn't want, I want mind being a motivational speaker. So that's when I connected with my guy Aaron Davis, who is a motivational speaker. He, he was a Husker too. He was a Husker too. Yeah. Maybe not a well-known one, but he was a yes. Husker. Hey, he was fullback, right? He, no, a wide receiver. Okay. And, and okay. He, and he, he wears one of those national championship there rings you go. with a lot of pride. So he became my mentor to help me to somewhat understand my platform as a former football player and help me to do what I'm doing today, which um, is called the game plan, ready, set, perform. And so, um, yeah, this is something that I started in 2008, launched a brand 2010, and here, here we are 10 years later, and I feel like I'm just getting started because it's always been my side hustle. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever do a full time like Aaron, yeah. but it allows me to fill other people's bucket but to help people understand how to be winners in the, in the game of life. Everything that I've learned by playing in Nebraska, how to work as a team, how to get back up when you get knocked down, you know, what it takes in terms of practice and just the emotional intelligence that you need in addition to that IQ, um, you know, it's important, not just yeah. for students, but for adults, for men, women, old, young, and uh, it's just another way for me to, to make a difference. Uh, because when I'm no longer here, no one's gonna talk about the bowl games, the degrees I got, uh, the sacks and everything. I mean, we might still talk about 2001. <laughs> we might still talk about a championship game. We won't we'll talk about it today, but yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, that's great. You wanna leave a legacy. Yeah, 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 exactly. So just like teammates mentoring is Tom Osborne's legacy. I want my speaking, the way that I made people, the impact that I had on, a, on other people, I want that to be my legacy. That's what I want people to say about me when I'm no longer here. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. And it's cool that you did come back to Nebraska after the fact. Obviously, Nebraska had an impression on you, and you wanted to, you know, give back, I guess. Yeah, well, you know, honestly, um, I didn't have that much of a choice because it was hard for me to get a real job. <laughs> but, you know, it made sense. You know, in 2008, I had two degrees, you know. And what, what was your what was your degree again? You said you got a bachelor's and a master's. Yeah, uh, so uh, po political science. I, I, thought I, wanted be, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer at first. Okay. But, uh, That's cool. But then I got my master's in educational psychology because I knew I wanted to help people in some capacity. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, Nebraska was the, was the place that gave me my first job, and I'm very thankful. The, the university right. actually. So full circle, working for the foundation, man, I'm I'm grateful. It's awesome. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. So I'm gonna address a couple comments here. So one guy, Donnie, he's a regular on our show. He says, seeing those guns look like you can still suit up again. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, for he, sure. he, he talked to us about his weight room uh, repertoire and how it was one of those things that really kept him motivated and going before we started the show. And, oh, and, uh, and I think it was Kelly Ann on, on Twitter who mentioned, you know, ask me if you can still suit up. She's met you before. And so I was like, you know, I didn't know what to expect when I saw you because the headshot, you weren't a suit or the body, you weren't a suit. So yeah, I couldn't tell. Yeah. Man, you could definitely still play. You looked like you could. Uh, wreck some bodies so you look like you're in great shape as well so you keep good good health and uh, well, that's good to see too so another nebraska after the bucks maybe no. <laughs> and, 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 and hey. ross and ross just to address your question we have a chair back here but it's so short that i'd be down here so i like to stand because if i sat down you got a little bit of my my, my, my so. bald head so <laughs> well hey well i, I mean I, I appreciate the comment i i definitely have nothing on sue's gun <laughs> I mean, those are some guns, but you know, I started lifting weights in middle school, and so it was something that 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 gave me a, a sense of efficacy. You know, it felt good, and I saw results, and I uh, just developed this love for the weight room. And so, when I was a freshman in Nebraska, I could max bench press wise four hundred five, and so uh, I just continued to, to step it up, eat that Omaha steaks and. <laughs> Um, baked potatoes and everything else that they was um, feeding me through that training table. By the time that I left Nebraska, I could max 500 bench press, 
Max 500 squat. Max, Max 255 more than I could ever do uh, yeah. with baseball. Different game, but I yeah. get it. That's crazy. Yeah, and um, and um, I was the lift of the year in Nebraska too. That, you, you oh, had, that's cool. You had a lot. Of, you had a lot of uh, awards in Nebraska that you won as a football player. Uh, talk a little bit about those awards and what they meant to you. Yeah, you know, um, I think after my junior year, I was uh, honorable mention um, All Big Twelve. Uh, led the team in sacks my junior year. Um, I guess three year black shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, I, got, I got my black shirt when I was a starter. Uh, Big Twelve championship. Yeah, um, there you go. But honestly, off the field, I would say is where I'm most proud of. You know, uh, academic All American, mm -hmm. uh, academic All Big Twelve for three years in a row. You know, for me to get my degree. I think I was the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, uh, Athlete of the Year um, after my senior year. And uh, just those other accomplishments, um, those other achievements that somewhat showed leadership, which is something to this day that um, I'm, I'm, I'm still embracing. You know, at the time, I didn't consider myself to be a leader, even though I was a starter. Because, you know, if you talk to anybody, the next former Husker you interview, <laughs> ask them about me, and, and they would tell you how quiet I was because, you know, I'm an introvert. And I was really, really introverted as a player, but uh, I led through my example. Yeah. Like, you know, people knew that, and they respected my leadership based on my work ethic in the weight room, my discipline off the field, and just on the field performance. Yeah. But I, I I was no Chris Kelsey, you know, and <laughs> revving everybody up. Kyle Van der Bosch, you know, that was just never my style. Uh, but definitely the off the field achievements. But my lift of the year, <laughs> I have to admit, that is my baby right there. There you go. There you go. Yep. Lift of the I year. mean, the other stuff is uh, clearly respectable, <laughs> but that's that's cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one to have. You say you're an introvert, and I would I would kindly disagree with that now in your life. <laughs> uh, maybe when you're in college, but I know people. I, I was an introvert in high school, mm -hmm. um, but again, college changed my life, and um, so it's it's again we've known you for a hot minute now. But you're inspiring just from hearing your story and hearing what you're doing now. I mean, I'm I'm almost mid 30s. I'm gonna be 35 this year, and just your story is inspiring, and what you do. For others and for the community and just that self-fulfilling. Uh, I work for a nonprofit and I know a lot of what we do is very good and what you did for teammates and what you're doing now. I mean, that, that's fantastic. That, that's inspiring as, as someone who's in their mid-30s just to know that you can have such a great impact on, on society uh, and motivational speaker. That's really cool. Really, really cool. Yeah. Well, you know, um, like I said, you know, I think everyone has a story and um, I'm just thankful, grateful that people gave me a chance and, uh, you know, to be in a position to give back. You know, some people have positions of power and um, they can use it for themselves or they can use it in a negative way. I've, I've chosen to use mine, you know, for the good of others, you know, to help others, to inspire others. You know, that's what I did through teammates when I was with them. That's what I, what I do as a as motivational speaker, that's even what I do through the foundation, you know, by helping alum donors to understand the impact that they can make mm -hmm. so that more students can fulfill their dreams and get to and through college with scholarships to create more positions and uh, make the university a place where people choose to go versus leaving the state or people that are out of state considering coming to Nebraska. So. Uh, it's, it's nice to know that everything that I'm doing uh, is in line with my values and kind of what I stand for. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. All right, so <laughs> you did say you want to talk a little football. Oh, and, and we do have a couple oh, questions. Oh, sorry, we already. probably do have questions. I can't see it the way you uh, And you mentioned the transfer portal. We'll get there. No, yeah. that, that was the very yeah. first question that came up. Yeah, we can. Um, we already talked about that before the show. A couple <laughs> other questions have to do with um, – what it was like to play for a guy like Frank Solich and just getting to know Tom Osborne. Um, what kind of impact that had on you? What was it like to play for a guy like Solich as a coach? Like, yeah. what was he like? What was the culture like um, compared to then and now, what you see on the field? How would you compare that culture? 
Oh, you know, uh, Frank was a, a funny guy. He laughed, but also on the field, you know, Frank is kind of short. Yes. And, 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 and kind of stocky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when he needed to get fiery or get in your face, he, he would get in your face in, in a respectful way. You know, um, I guess going back to 98 to 2002, that era, you had Charlie McBride as a defensive coordinator. Right, yeah. You had uh, Tenifer, uh offensive line, um, uh, Coach Young and Darlington. Then you had Nelson Barnes, um, Craig Bowe. These are all coaches that had so much experience. Um, we can do nothing but respect the coaches, number one. Two, uh, we competed. Um, I know things are different nowadays to where you can only put on full pads for so many days and this and that, but Tuesdays and Wednesdays, full pads, we competed. And Wednesdays, we always look forward to the end of practice because that's when the number one offense will go against the number one defense. Okay. That's cool. And so, you, you know. Some, you got some good offenses, some damn good defenses, yeah. too. So, so you know, you know, what, what do we say? To be the best, you got to play the best. Yep. So, in the offense head, they're going against the best. In our head, we're going against the best. And so, being competitive amongst each other is what set the stage for us to com compete on Saturday. Okay. And so, um, I know with protocols and concussions and this and that, uh, the way that teams practice is a little different. But they created an environment for us to compete. I mean, to the point to where I still remember as a sophomore, I got my black shirt. But when they noticed I wasn't competing, I, I didn't lose my black shirt, but I, I lost my starting spot. And so competition was definitely important. Well, and it was probably pretty fun, too. I mean, if you get a tackle for loss or a sack. Well, maybe not a sack because you probably didn't sack the quarterbacks. But whoa, 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 wait, wait. Did you ever sack Eric Crouch? <laughs> uh, <laughs> actually, I did. There you go. Okay. Yeah, so, so you know, uh, Eric was one of the fastest players I've, 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 I've played with. Uh, I want to say 4'3". Okay. Uh, however, I was a 4'5". Okay. There you go. There so, you so, you know, in practice, um, you know, um, we weren't too far off. You know, he just didn't just, you know, go like this. But, of course, we couldn't tackle the quarterback. <laughs> but, That's I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I've hit him before. And, and <laughs> there are many times that Coach Sellage would call me out or, you know, get in my face because, you know, I hit Eric. But uh, Eric was a cool guy, and um, he still is a cool guy. We, we've talked to him a couple of times. He's yeah, a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, um, and and even also something else that's different, recruitment. Just thinking about Eric Krause, for example. You know, I'm pretty sure he was a man here in Nebraska, no, no. but the entire country probably didn't know who Eric Krause was. But yeah. Nebraska, at the time, they looked for certain qualities, talent, character, leadership. And who would have thought Eric would become the best player in a nation? Because they didn't go after the four-star, five-star, hyped-up players. They went after players who were football players, who could bring character, who would come to this school and know that we will develop so much more than just football, but help them to be winners in the game of life. And so, and I'm one of them. I mean, I was probably maybe half a star. <laughs> I mean, There's no <laughs> Seriously, I mean, no one, I mean, Palm of Arkansas. The reason Nebraska, I even got on their radar is because I came up to their football camp the summer before my senior year. Okay. If it wasn't for their football camp, they would have probably never heard of me. So, you know, so to all of the 16, 17-year-olds out there, you know, I put myself out there. You know, uh, I, I took the initiative. It's one thing to say, I want to play college, D1, this and that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes you got to, you know, take initiative, give your best effort. Because so many people give their best excuses. So is that how that came about? You came to a camp. Came to a in camp. In Lincoln? In Lincoln. I, how did you 
How do you feel about it? Yeah, how, I mean, obviously, yeah. you, like you said, they're no, you know, wrestling number one in the country at the time. I mean, everybody's probably itching to go to that, but how did that transpire? Yeah, so, you know, I had a decent junior year, you know, yeah. to where in Arkansas, you know, I was considered, like, you know, rising, you know, senior in Arkansas. Yeah. So yeah. teams were sending me football camps, you know, just, you know, come to our camp. But that's it. No, no scholarship offer. Okay. I mean, you should. You had to probably pay to go to those camps, huh? <laughs> yeah. And, and it was the same way for hockey yeah, camps. Yeah, yeah, camps yeah. for me. Yeah. So, to be honest, I didn't follow Nebraska. You know, um, because the teams that came on the majority of the time were SEC, here, the SEC, mm-hmm. Notre Dame, uh, Florida State, Florida. Those were the yeah. hot teams. Texas, Miami. The reason I came to Nebraska football camp because it was the cheapest. <laughs> It was $150. There you, go. there you go. And then when I looked up the flights, round trip was 220 That's okay. the only reason. And it's nothing against, you know, Nebraska's tradition and championships. I just didn't know anything about Nebraska, but I knew how important it was for me to go to a football camp to learn my skills, put myself out there. And I'm so glad that I came to Nebraska because that's where I was able to see all of the different championships and uh, field, I mean, the, the AstroTurf, which was yeah, so cool. Yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, I was super fast on an AstroTurf. <laughs> <laughs> and in a weight room, being a weightlifter, I mean, uh, Boyd Epley and everything that he had yeah. built, the training table, I mean, man, it was a no-brainer. And then, you know, to go through all of those drills, those tests, and for them to say, you know, if I have a good senior year and keep my grades up, they would consider giving me a scholarship that was the motivation for me to go back to Pine Bluff, not get in any trouble, keep working hard, get my grades up, get the ACT score, and kill it on the football field. And in, in November, that's when I got that call from Coach Osborne giving me that scholarship. That's a pretty, truly incredible, cool story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, so you're talking about a team that just won, at that point, probably two of the last three years of championships yeah. when you're a junior. I mean, we got the posters up here uh, yeah. with all the championships. So two or three years, they didn't have to charge a lot because kids would come to the camp. The money was there. That everything's on the wall. Yeah. Right? Or you could have seen it the other way that it could have been the most expensive, but yeah, it wasn't. And so that I mean, that's really cool. Again, that, that's really cool. This is what's really nice about having people on different generations. Yeah. So we get to learn like, what was your process like, and why did you choose Nebraska? And, and you look at, the, have you been in the weight room? Like, what was the last time you were at Nebraska, the weight room? And when was the last time you seen it? And yeah, yeah. what's that like now? Oh, I mean, it's next level. I mean, I'm actually jealous. <laughs> I know Sue, Sue, yeah. it's, got, it's his weight room, yeah. essentially. Oh, and Did they let you go in there? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, well, so actually, uh, so pre-COVID was my last time. Oh, okay. okay. Being over there. So we're talking maybe February last 2020. Year, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, what they have now, I'm jealous. And what they're getting ready to have in another three, four years when they build a new the complex, complex yeah. I'm going to be even more jealous. But back then, Nebraska was the elite university. No one else was doing what Nebraska was doing when it came to the weight room, training table, resources. I mean, thinking, thinking from field turf to um, astro turf to field turf, we were the first university to have field turf. I mean, we were always the leader of everything. And so to where we are today, my hope is that we can find a way to be the leader again. Now, everyone has good weight rooms, training tables, and uh, all of that stuff. And, you know, they have pool tables. They got yeah, hot tubs. Yeah. And right, yeah. who was it? Uh, uh, is it Florida? Who's the school that now has, like, an aviation part of their – Oh, wow. Wait, it, is, I can't remember who it is. It, it might be Miami, but it, they're an aviation school too. So they, yep. have, they have the Air Force, they have stuff like that. So it's one of those things that I, I'm like, wait, why do you have that? I looked it up and I go, oh, okay, they got, you guys go to school for this. Yeah. So they got that as part of their football facility. That's though. Yeah. Like, mm. that's wild. Like, you, you see some crazy stuff in those facilities nowadays. Yeah, yeah. But, but I must say, one of the things that Nebraska is doing that will make Nebraska in front of other universities. As you know, um, hopefully it, it goes through the whole NIL, name, image, likeness. So right now, Nebraska is um, partnering with the College of Business so that they can put resources in place for all student athletes 
to help them understand how to leverage themselves, how to, how to leverage their brand, because they're gonna, they're, they're, I mean, I mean, whether they like it or not, they are walking businesses. Not just the football players, but yeah, all the volleyball, athletes. the yeah. softball, I mean, the volleyball, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Volleyball, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, so while everyone's talking about it right now, Husker Athletics and the College of Business, they already have things in place. And for me, you know, working through the foundation. We're, we're securing resources so we can be the leader of NIL so that our football players, they can take advantage of their brand, but but be responsible. Mm -hmm. So, um, but in terms of everything that Scott Frost is doing, you know, I believe in his leadership. You know, if not, if, if not Scott Frost, who else? So, I mean, you know, this guy, what, it took him 20 yeah, years before two he... Two years, I think. Well, well, 20 years before he won his first championship. Yes. yes. Now, now he, he got to other championships, but he didn't win yeah. it. Yeah. So. Yeah, because he wasn't he wasn't going for a tie. He told yeah. us straight yeah. up he was yeah. not going yeah. for a tie. Yeah. Because that had happened a few years before that, and he was like, I was disgusted by it, and I wasn't gonna let it happen. Yeah. So you know, I think we live in this microwave generation. You know, people want things now; they want it quick. Uh, but you know, uh, as as I tell people, when it comes to barbecue, I'm a smoker. You know, yeah. if, if you want the real deal, good results, mm -hmm. it takes time, man. And so um, I want to give Scott time. And, and I hope Nebraska Nation will give him time because there's so many things behind the scenes that people don't get. The transfer portal. Do we want to talk about that? We, 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 we can. Will, we will. We Just can. a second. Okay, okay. One other thing to address before about you personally. Yeah. Before we address that. Your offers. Did you receive oh, yeah. any did want other to offers too. elsewhere other than Nebraska? Did you get any of the one offers? If not, what were the other offers in general? So it's interesting. Uh, once, I guess, Nebraska put me on the radar as like one of their recruits. And then everybody comes on board. <laughs> there you go. That's a championship team. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. But, but prior to that, I would say uh, I actually had two offers, Arkansas State and Baylor. Okay. Now, so you said something about yeah. Baylor. Now, now, yeah. now, Baylor was not the Baylor that they are today. Right. Uh, I mean, we're talking no wins, one win. But I was fortunate. But my, my five top choices, my five visits, because I took all of them because, I mean, free food and fights yeah. and stuff. Oh, party. Yeah. Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. A little stipend money. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. No, we don't need to talk too many details. Let's, let's keep it. Or we can keep going. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Nebraska, Missouri, Ole Miss, Arkansas, and Baylor. Were my five visits, okay. top five choices. And then it was after the fact when I committed to Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, Florida State started coming out. But by the end, again, it was a no-brainer. They it just was. won the championship. And Tom brought Frank to Pine Bluff and said, hey, all of the same coaching staff are going to be at Nebraska. We just got to hire one running backs coach, uh, Dave Gillespie. Okay, yeah. And, yeah. and you still got all of these players coming back. But no one told me the number that I picked, the shoes that I had to fill. Because in high school, I picked number 95, like the ugliest number, and I wanted to make it look cool. So when I came to Nebraska, you know, I asked, what number do you want? I was like, give me number 98. <laughs> No way. <laughs> Thinking that 98 uh, was an ugly number. Uh, yeah, no. But I didn't realize... It was Grant Armstrong. <laughs> yep. So man, oh man, uh, I definitely did not get close to filling his shoes whatsoever. But it's just funny that uh, what I thought I was doing to try to, you know, pick this ugly number to make it be cool. Grant Wisher had, had already done that. This goes to show how much you didn't pay attention to Nebraska <laughs> yeah. before you got to Nebraska. Yeah. yeah. It's a little different nowadays. Than yeah. Back then. Yeah. Man. That, oh, that's, cool. oh, that's great. So Grant, Grant Wistrom, Jason Peter, obviously those guys were on the way out when you got, you know, right before you got there. And, uh, and uh, Scott Frost, too. And Frost, yeah. yeah. They, they yeah. just won the championship. Uh, and, and Osborne told us that that's the only reason why he came back for one more year. So they thought Wistrom and no, Peter. No, because Wistrom and Peter They were, in they were round one. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, they're, they're so first round draft picks. We want you to come back. And he's like, I promised Frank, but 
And then he had to go to the bank and said, hey, these guys said I can't leave. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Did you get to meet them? Like, did you, I mean, I, I'm sure you know them now. But. Yeah. So, so I met Grant Lewiston for the first time. Um, After you chose his number? After he, after, he me, after he gave me his glove when I was seven years old, eight years old. Um, two thousand, I think two thousand and seventeen. I think they they were celebrating. I think the ninety seven championship. Okay. okay. So, so they brought back that whole like team. Good point. Okay. And then they did this um, special thing in Memorial Stadium on, on one of the floors and stuff. And so that's my first time actually meeting. Wow. Grand Wisherman. And so I, I, I actually went up to him like I was a fan. I was like, excuse me, like, hey, you know, I'm I'm the yeah. Adams. Uh, I actually wore your number afterwards. Hey, it's a pleasure to meet you. Hey, can we take a pic? Hey, can I get your autograph? That's awesome. That's <laughs> I, I mean, so awesome. because, you know, I mean, I couldn't help but to learn everything that he had done in Nebraska once I got to Nebraska mm-hmm. wearing his number. And so I was kind of one of those fans of him. For the first time, meet him in person. So uh, yeah, I met him for the first time, just literally four years ago, and it was pretty cool. I mean, I mean, suckers still tall and <laughs> look good, and I mean, man, did you rock the the, uh, the belly the belly jersey ah! the same way that he did? <laughs> oh, Unfortunately, at that you know <laughs> the, the, the rules they put into place on the I mean, uniforms. I had long jerseys yeah. like, down <laughs> my knees, and so yeah, we we but but yeah, I did think that that, that was pretty cool. I mean, just especially when they're throwing up the bones and seeing these abs and everything. Yeah, so, yeah, it's it, crazy, man. So speaking a little bit on those terms, so the championship game you played in, yeah, Orange Bowl, Rose, Rose Bowl, Bowl. Rose, it was Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl, Miami. Miami. yes. Playing Miami in Miami. My lord, yeah. that, that Miami team was stacked. They had like... You guys were stacked too. They had like yeah. 20 yeah. out of their 22 starters that got drafted. Yeah, but what was it like playing in a game of that high profile? What was what were the nerves like? What, what was the game plan like? I mean, just get us in the mindset as a player and as a really damn good defensive end. I mean, yeah. we, we, we've seen you play. We've seen the film. Huge fans then. Get us in the mindset of what it went to to prepare for that game. The nerves. What was it like? So that year was my junior year. That that was the 2001 season. 2001. Yep. Up to the Colorado game, we knew we were the best team in the country. We were number one. Mm-hmm. We watched that game together, by yep, the way. We did. The Colorado game. The Colorado game. Something mm-hmm. happened. We just couldn't figure it out. And so, you know, of course, that one loss took us out of the Big 12 mm-hmm. championship. So we just had to sit back and just see what our destiny is going to be. And lo and behold, we slowly went from number four to number two. Mm-hmm. So went out to California, and, you know, I think we were still – I know the coaches were still on the edge because, I mean, we literally got stunned by Colorado. I mean, it was, yeah. it was like it a stun. Like, so yeah. I know the coaches were – a little bit on the edge. We as players still didn't really know what happened, but yet, you know, we were trying to find that confidence. You know, I mean, like, we, we, I mean, we were full of pads, and plus being in California, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. we were staying at the Beverly Hills. Oh, so little just, baby? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Beverly Hills, Hollywood, I mean, the experience was amazing. And then plus, I knew Pine Bluff, Arkansas, all my friends, family, the entire country were going to be focused on that one game that uh-huh. night. But I must say, for some reason, we did not – I know me personally, I didn't feel like we went into that game with that same confidence that we had before the Colorado game. Because, um, you know, a couple of, of my buddies – on the offensive line, and I'm not going to say their name, but, <laughs> you know, from the get-go, they they told me that they were intimidated from Miami's players with the dreads and the gold team, and they're going out, and, 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 and they're like, holy crap, you know, you know, because these are, you know, Nebraska kids, they've never seen anything like this, uh, right? And so they were already intimidated from Miami's swagger, and then a couple plays into the game, I mean, they're like – up 14-0 and so with the coaches being on edge with us not fully having that same confidence um 
we just didn't play like we were playing the entire year. Uh, but overall, it was a great experience. Yeah. Um, at the time, you know, speaking of all of the first rounders, I was going against a, a first rounder, Brian McKinney, 6'9", 375, 380. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of like a David versus a Goliath type thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, I still remember one time I got around him, and I see the quarterback because um, I can't think of his name because he was also a Heisman can okay. uh, candidate. Who was the quarterback? Dorsey, yes, Dorsey, yes, and he hadn't been sacked the entire year. <laughs> One time, truly incredible. I got around McKinney and I saw him. Next thing I know, I'm flying <laughs> <laughs> because all McKinney had to do was just put his arm like right. that. I mean, his arms were so long. I mean, I, I, I would. Well, I met Jeremy Shockey. Yeah, and, yeah, Shockey. I mean, yeah. They, they were loaded, but I must say, Jeremy Shockey, at the end of the, at the end of that game, he showed me some love because he tried to block me, and I kind of held my ground. Yeah. So in terms of when he blocked me, he didn't dominate me. And so at the end of the game, I do remember he came up to me, showed me some love, and um, you know that at least made me feel like, man, you know, I guess I. Did a pretty good job. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We lost the game, and I'm pissed, but that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And then, hey, senior year, man, we, we, you know, at least I know for Chris Kelsey and I, man, let's come back like thunder and lightning. Yeah. Yeah. But, man, senior year, 7-7. Seven seven, yeah. It's hard to explain, man, but, uh, yeah, I guess to answer your question, our confidence just wasn't there. Something happened. The Colorado yeah. game. Who um who was the quarterback in 2002? Uh, Jamal Lord. Jamal Lord. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, I mean, I mean, huge fan. I mean you, you like you like I mean you like Jamal Lord. Yeah. yeah. I mean, huge fan. He was, but he was, oh young, he was young at the time. Um, yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. I mean, we still had. I mean, Dwan Gross. Yeah. You know, he was a senior All American. I mean, yep. would intercept the ball and score. I mean, he, he was returning punt returns. Uh, we still had an amazing team, but I still feel that 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 edge losing to Colorado and the Rose Bowl carried over well, I mean, until yeah, senior year. We just people were just on edge. The coaches, the players. I know for me, you know, I'm I'm, I'm trying to do what I can to get to the NFL. So it was Chris and Scott Shanley and others, and it was just so much pressure to where you know sometimes. You know, pressure can be good, but when you put pressure on yourself, it ends up hurting you more than it helps. Well, and it kind of seems like that maybe has been the situation over the last few years. Yeah. What was Devin Hester on that team? Who? Devin Hester. Uh, so, was he on that Miami team, or was he a little bit later? Uh, he was a little bit later. So you know, yeah. uh, there was McGahey. Oh, that's right, McGahey. Yeah. Oh yep. my God. And uh, there was another okay. running back. Uh, yep. He had Ed Reed. Ed Reed. Ed, um, oh, uh, two linebackers. You had Vilma, DJ Johnson. I, I mean, they were loaded, but Nebraska was loaded too. So, yes. so, <laughs> so, so to Nebraska Nation, don't give Miami all of the credit no. because we we had the Heisman Trophy winner. Right. Keo Craver was an all American that, that year. Man, so, I mean, Keo Craver was one of our favorites. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and he was your roommate, so that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, cool. Okay, so let's flip to current Nebraska State. So there was a question earlier on about the transfer portal. And we talked a little bit about, about uh, before the show about talking to, about the transfer portal. What are your thoughts on it? Going back to when you played, um, what was it? Like was it similar as far as players transferring, and what's it like now? Pros and cons for me, more cons than pros as a former player, okay. and, and and here's why. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of players transfer, you know, when I was a player. You stuck it out. Yep. You you you, you worked harder. Sorry, I, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that that yeah. sounds rude, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the backups knew that. They could be a starter just like that. So second streamers, third streamers were just as good as the starters, number one. Number two, back then, they didn't recruit all of the time your four-star, five-star. Tom Osborne and, and, and his team, I mean, and coaches, 
they recruited certain skills. I mean, I was 6'2", 235 playing defensive end. Why? Because Nebraska was, they noticed something in 96 against Florida State. Okay, yeah. Their, their defensive ends yeah. were smaller. They had some speed. No, actually, I take that back. Uh, it was um, early 90s. 93? I think, I think 93. It, it was whenever Florida State beat Nebraska. 93, 90, might have been 94 yeah. or whatever that whole thing happened. And, and so that's when Charlie McBride, Coach Osborne came back and said, hey, we need to change some things up. Bring some speed and some exactly. size. And so that's when Nebraska started, you know, going more towards speed. And so you have a guy like me playing defensive end. And so I wasn't your four-star, five-star, number one. And then two, to even come to Nebraska, even if I wasn't starting, I'm not transferring. It's the best team in the country. Nowadays, as I said, we live in this microwave generation to where when players don't get their way, they were superstars in high school, and they come to college, and they're no longer a superstar. Or they compete, and they don't win. They don't get their way. Or they're we, freshmen, they we, gotta wait. We've talked about it a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that freshman and you gotta wait thing just kills me. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you're 18 years old, and you got 22 year olds that are 200 and, or 320 pounds, <laughs> and you're gonna leave because you're not playing. Yeah. And, and then just the competition level, too. You know, like I say, we competed every single day, every single week. Uh, nowadays, I think players expect something by not doing nothing. Some players want to look pretty and, you know, have their little wristbands and dance and, you know, after they make a play and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, there was no dancing celebrating. Minus, you were losing. Uh, minus minus the bone, yeah, right? yeah. Even when you're, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when we were losing, it was no celebrating. Like to see some players celebrating when you're losing, what are they celebrate? You make a play, get your butt back in the huddle and, yeah. and, and and do it again. Yep. So I think it's generational. Okay. Uh, but sure. but definitely the competition isn't the way that it used to be, um, and so. I think the transfer portal, there are more cons and pros. Yeah, because that's not just at Nebraska. I mean, that's that's a, and and nationwide. It, yeah, it, it, it was at Nebraska, but yeah, it's but nationwide. And, and Micah mentioned that uh, his, uh, our, our cousin's husband. He mentioned that uh, '93 was the FSU game. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, the transfer portal. You know, we see a lot of guys leaving now, and a lot of people give. Frost. They, they really come down on Frost and the staff on guys leaving. Guys like um, Kay Warner. Kay, He's a captain. I mean, what? Kay Warner transfers. Um, and does, does he even have a destination yet? Not yet. Uh, McCaffrey and Robinson and uh, who was. Hymas. <laughs> well, Hymas opted out. He's going to NFL Conference. Or um, Farniak. Far, Farniak's younger. Uh, and then we had, we had a wide receiver transfer. He's going to, I think, uh, who's the wide receiver? I can't remember his name. He played in one game at five catches for like. Mark five yards. He's going Maryland. But it, from what I understand of those guys and what people are saying is yeah, these guys are on social media too much. One of the guys was on social media doing a, a live video like 30 minutes before the Ohio State game. Yeah, man. That's, and and yeah. talk about that preparation. Like, why are these guys on social media? And why is, for one, is, is that being allowed? Are they being sneaky? Like, what are your thoughts behind that? So, when I was a player, there were times when coaches told us not even to watch ESPN. Like, like, <laughs> I'm sure. Like, if we had a night game, don't even feed into what those reporters and folks are saying. Like, get focused. Don't watch college game, game day. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, exactly. And, and so, I mean, we were so zoned into our game. I mean, you know, we would go to a movie as a team Friday night, stay in a hotel, and then Saturday, we did everything as a team until it was game time. And, I mean, you know, cell phones were just starting to come up. We didn't have all the social media and stuff. I mean, but, I mean, preparation, like, I mean, um, Jack Stark, uh, our sports psychologist, like, preparation started as early as Thursday in terms of you, you need to, the, what you eat and how you sleep Thursday night is what's going to show up Saturday. I mean, so a lot of it was very like sports psychology you know just the mental but nowadays i mean 
it's hard to control a teenager. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I don't know if they have the same resources over there that, that they had when I was a player. Like, Jack helped us with that mental part of the game. We had people to help us with those life skills, to, to help us understand leadership on and off the field. I do feel that the players need to understand leadership on the field because going back to these players that are transferring, some things you just got to stick it out. Sometimes you just have to compete because when players transfer, for those that don't understand, it messes up the whole vision that these coaches have for bringing in someone, you know, to be the next you know, Martinez, or to be the next Mills, or to be the next Robinson, because I didn't know that I was going to, you know, be the next starter or whatnot. You know, when I came in, you had Mike Rucker, you had Chad Kelsey. But some way, somehow, Tom Oswald had this vision that, you know, Des Moines is going to be able to bring some speed to the end when it's his time. He's still going to have to compete. But, you know, it's kind of like, you know, agriculture. You, You reap what you sow. And so I'm thankful that I, I nurtured my, my potential, and when the time was right, I had I had that opportunity. But players these days, I think they get so distracted with what they see, read, and hear, social media. They, they see these other running backs, quarterbacks, starting their freshman year, your Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields, and they get so distracted instead of focusing on their Ryan story. You know, <laughs> Their story, focusing on their craft, waiting for their time. And if you think about, I mean, look at um, uh, the Arizona quarterback with the Cardinals. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. He had one good year. Mm-hmm. Joe Burrow had one good year. He had one good year. And people still crucify Nebraska for not bringing him in. Um, what's his, uh, Baker Mayfield. One, one good, good year. year. And, and, and so... Right there. <laughs> so that's the last three. Shit. The yeah. three Oklahoma quarterbacks, Shit. one good year. You yeah. Can, you can also, Heisman winners. You can almost even say Patrick Mahomes, too. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. yeah. So I say all that to say, you know, I just think players' priorities are not in the right place. Um, not everyone's going to start for three, four years. It may be one year. It may be two years. At the end of the day, Players should be fortunate that they have an opportunity to come to Nebraska. And I think the transfer portal uh, is really not a good thing, especially in this generation. And it really messes up the vision that Scott Frost is trying to create for Nebraska football. Yeah, we don't like it. <laughs> um, we've talked about, like I said, we talked about it a lot. Yeah. It's almost like an easy opt out. Like, as, this is the easy way for me to get out. The way the NCAA works now is not, it's no longer. You have to sit a year. It's almost like you're almost immediately eligible no matter what the situation is. Yeah. You can say this happens and we're going to create you immediate eligibility. So there's no rules surrounding it, kind of like the red shirt rule as well. The, the and, red shirt. And the red which, shirt rule is fine. I mean, look at look yeah. it. Well, it is, but it's not. Look at Derek King. Well, he was a, a three year starter. Well, you're right. I mean, and then, you can then play he gets, in four games then he and gets you a, still get He gets a red shirt, shirt because his team sucked. That rule goes to not, Miami. That rule is not. Fun. And now he's got an extra year of eligibility because of COVID. Because of COVID, he's got an extra year of eligibility. So, so now years? he's getting six years out of college and a free transfer year yeah. from Houston, and it doesn't make sense. In that sense, do you have to go for your masters doing that? He has to take like one class. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I I registered, and and I'm thankful that I registered because it gave me an extra year to actually learn what I was mm-hmm. doing, to yep. actually get a little bigger, faster. As stronger. a freshman, I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. 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 As a seventeen junior. or eighteen years old, this <laughs> yeah. is weird. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, just just on those lines, um, ah, you know, I just don't think that. It's a good thing, number one. Uh, two, what I was meaning to say, I, I graduated in three years because I registered. I said I had two more years left. Oh, okay. So I could have yeah. chose okay. to just take a couple classes and this and that. But, man, like I say, that darn Dennis a blunt, man. He's a man. You know, he said, well, why don't you go for your master's? I'm like, what's a master's? <laughs> what is that? Being first generation. Right. 
I mean, man, just how they set me up. And I'm just thinking of the, just if more players would have people like Osborne, Dennis LeBlanc, Robert Hicks, Coach Ron Brown, Turner Gill. Because one day football is going to end. Mm -hmm. And did you gain more from the university, more from football than just football? What about life skills? What about a degree, leadership? You know, your your network is, you know, and so uh, I just hope that um, Nebraska can, you know, even when they think about recruiting, don't do what other universities are doing. Stop going for these four-star, five-star players. Hey, recruit right here in your backyard. Eric Krause, backyard. backyard. I mean, there's talent here in Nebraska, and there are a ton of half-star players like myself that would do anything for just the opportunity to play football. That's who you are going to get the most grit and the person that will just go out and give their 200%. Not a five-star, yeah. but someone who have worked their entire life Busted their butt to get what they have gotten. Those are the ones that are going to appreciate how you look at a guy like Luke Reimer. Yeah. That is oh exactly the yeah. type of person that, that he was. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him, he's a starter now. Like, he's, he's, a, guy, he's a starter, he's a and he was a good starter. Yeah. yeah. And he's a stud. I mean, you, you got out of the state of Nebraska, uh, like you said, a lot of talented guys. And one thing that Osborne mentioned to us was the walk on program and how that really depleted after Solich was gone. Yeah. And now Frost is trying to get that back. And what's funny is he takes a lot of flack for it because he's not getting all the Omaha kids. But he's got like 13 out of 16 top recruits in Nebraska, yeah. but the three top Omaha guys doesn't have. And okay. people are just hounding it's him. It's like not that they didn't try but, Arthur or Monte Diggers. But not everyone wants to play for Nebraska. These kids now didn't see Nebraska winning. They didn't see the 90s like even we were 10 years old. seniors in high school didn't watch you in the national championship. Yeah. yeah, but but hey, you know, let's be honest here. Who is one of the best NFL running backs? Henry? <laughs> he yeah. throws guys well, five feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's one of them. McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Oh, and, and oh Christian McCaffrey. Should have won a Heisman yep, winner. Should have won a And his skin color is? White. So... Rex Burkhead. Rex Burkhead? Um, Danny Woodhead would have killed it in Nebraska. Danny would have killed, would have killed it in Nebraska. If Nebraska would have gave him an opportunity. So I say all that to say, I know there's there's this perception that Omaha has a ton of talent, which I get. But North Platte, Bridgeport, I mean, you like got, I, you know, I, darn, you know, <laughs> Scott's Bluff, Garen, Nebraska, they got some talent too. I, I, Kids that are just as fast, just as strong, yep. but I guarantee they will be more committed to this program than a five-star superstar. Yep. Well, I was listening to somebody today that said uh, there's a kid out of Columbus. I, I, I couldn't tell you his name. I'd have to look it up. But um, Nebraska came in early on him. He's the mm -hmm. first ones. And now, Everybody. I mean, every, you know, most of the Big Ten, Michigan, Iowa, Minnesota – uh, even like you know, ACC schools like Virginia uh, are going after him, and they said he's going to commit in March. And it sounds like he's going to come to Nebraska because uh, they were early on him. Yeah, uh, yeah. And he's from Columbus, but they're like, man, going to like a kid in Columbus is not like coming to Omaha or Lincoln. But it was, we'll see. and I think that that's a lot to Scott. You gotta look at the the recruiting process and what he's doing. How much did he learn from Tom Osborne and Frank Solich and what they're doing with their program? And and, and Mike had mentioned too that, that um, Callahan was the guy that kind of stopped that walk on program. And, and yeah. I mean, I, I think 100. percent I, I think Bo tried, but I think Bo was also more the mindset of the the Texas and trying to recruit out of state you're in as the Big well. 12, when you're in the Big 12, you kind of have to recruit in that area. Yep. So, um, yeah. again, I think we got a lot of in-state talent. It's just getting those guys to compete and realizing you got maybe one and two-star guys, maybe three-star guys that can compete. You might get four or five-star guys here and there, but your program can be built off of those three-star guys. It was definitely nice getting a, a guy like Fidelity 
I know he's a cow's bluffs, but yeah, local, <laughs> local, 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 local kid. And he grew Number up one kid kid, out of Iowa, but right? he's, <laughs> he's going to be really, really good. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, Osborne did do a good job of creating diversity. I mean, because like I said, there were guys from Hawaii, from Florida. I mean, like Texas. I mean, like I said, Keo Craver. You mm-hmm. had Joe Walker. Yeah. Kareel Buckhaw took from Alabama. Oh, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, really, 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 really. I mean, definitely the diversity that, you know, Coach brought on. Scott is learning. I know Tom is right there mentoring Scott. You know, his his, his first year, I mean, hey, I get it. If I was say, hey, Coach, I would want to come in and, 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 and do things my way, the, the way that I did them at Florida. Mm-hmm. And then once you realize it doesn't work, okay, you know, let me lean on my mentor and kind of see what I need to do after three years. Guess what? Ron Brown just got promoted to uh, another position yeah. so that he can kind of be in that – you know, just kind of in that... Um, he uses brain. Yeah. He you uses know, head. Well, yeah. and Jason Peter and Jay Foreman, they just, within the last day or two, those guys are going to be on board with the football program. Yeah, yeah. So that'll, yeah, I mean... Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so just, you know, it takes time. I think that Scott is the guy. And you live, you learn. I mean, I mean, people know all of these quotes day by day. We get better and better. I mean... <laughs> In, in, indeed, the glory. I mean, so yeah. in other words, we live, we learn, and we get better to play another day, another year. So, yeah. um, with that, I'm excited about the future of Nebraska football, uh, but we need to be patient. Yeah. And um, I will never uh, be critical, especially Damn. Scott. It's like my brother, even though I didn't play with him. I mean, it, every football player that has come through Nebraska. We have to be more respectful, have more regard for one another. And now is not the time for us to be critical of Scott, of Greg Austin, of, of Barrett oh, Rude, and any other former player that is coaching right now. Like, that's the last thing that they need right now. What they need from us as former players is love, support. We believe in you. We're not giving up on you. That is what they need. So that's to all <laughs> former players. I get it. We all have our own opinions and uh, this and that. But at the end of the day, Scott is our brother. Yeah. Greg is our brother. We got to get behind our brothers Ryan and help them. Ryan Hell. Right. You mean right now? Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it, uh, go ahead. Now. Uh, I was just gonna say, like you, you mentioned a lot of that, that, that kind of brother. I mean, you you played with a decent amount of. I think there was what three or four guys in your roster that were Hawaiian. Yeah. Um, it, it maybe it might have been more, but three or four if I was looking correctly. And now we got uh, Tony on the roster. Yeah. He's starting I mean, to bring guys from shoot, Southern we, California. We got the number one Hawaii. recruit out of the state of Hawaii. Yeah. Um, I mean, those are big wins, and I think more people are focused big on time four-star linebacker. What too. we don't get rather than what we do get. Yeah. There's not enough talk about uh, Tour and Steph. Out of Montana and USC. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. those guys are going to be huge transfers for Nebraska. But everyone's talking about what we didn't get, or what we lost, or what we lost. It's yeah. like focus on the guys that we have coming, not the guy, not Fleming and Robinson and McCaffrey that we lost. Yeah. It, don't put. I don't care what they do. I don't care what Jebby is doing now. I don't <laughs> care what um, uh, Patty O'Brien. I don't care what they're doing now. I care what guys that are at the as a Nebraska fan. I care what they're doing. For the Huskers, yeah, I don't care what the transfers do. I really don't. And once they leave, everyone's like, "Once a Husker, always a Husker." Well, not really. Depending on why you left, maybe you're not always a Husker. Like you're definitely not now. So why yeah. are you still a Husker? And I, I feel like you're kind of one of those guys that just lives and I mean, you're wearing you your see, Husker shirt, your yeah. Husker hat. Like, you live and breathe Nebraska football. Just and I think a lot out. of guys are that way. Once you leave, you're no longer a Husker. Yeah, and, 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 you know, I get it. Not every player had the best experience or the, the experience that they may have wanted. You know, maybe right. they thought that they were going to come here and be a superstar or be a starter, and they didn't get that experience. And so um, they leave somewhat bitter, and their bitterness turns into being critical uh, or whatnot. But, you know... I had nothing but a great experience. And, and like I say, as much as I can sit here and say I was a three-year starting black shirt defensive end, uh, there were times when I lost my, my, my starting spot because the culture of Nebraska football back then, we had to compete. 
We have to bring it. And High you, standards, yep, yep, expectations. Yeah. And if you stop competing, then hey, you're not going to play. And so, regardless of who we're recruiting, if players can have that competitive drive and that attitude that I'm going to give 200%, like my guy Scott Shanley from a small town who earned a scholarship, walk on, earned a scholarship. Is he from Say That? He is. Yeah. Yeah. I worked with a guy from yeah. Say That. And he is yeah. a, big, he's a big fan. And played in the NFL mm-hmm. for, for the almost, same, ten, for for almost ten, 10 years. Won a Super Bowl, yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. So those are guys. He is one example, someone who I played with, who worked his butt off. I mean, he even shaved his head to try to be cool like me. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so the players that they have on the team, they were brought there for a reason. So if one man goes down, someone needs to step it up. That's the leadership. And so that's the one thing that I see missing from players is that leadership, mm-hmm. is you, you step up every day. It doesn't matter if you're second string, third string, you practice – as if you're going to start and you do it every single year because then once you hit the real world that's that's how I, that's how I operate today yeah. well and we saw it last year um, when uh, Martinez got you know uh, Luke, took, Luke took over as a starter yeah. and if you saw that video he said I don't care if I'm the starter if he's the starter whoever we need our guys on board and the message and speech he gave was really really cool yeah um and you know you could just see that he was a leader yeah and obviously luke played not great in the next game and then you know adrian won his job back and he was better after the fact yeah and it's you know guys like that that are true leaders that we need (laughs) yeah 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 i mean because his speech i guarantee i mean um just his spirit was probably like Brooke Behringer's spirit. Oh, I'm sure. You know, for him yeah. to help Nebraska win that championship, and yeah. then Tommy's back healthy, and he comes back, and he gets that position. But Brooke's character and leadership, he was still right there just in case. He was still right and there. And still played. Yeah. In the championship. Yeah. yeah. But also supporting Tommy, rooting for Tommy. Yeah. Wanted him to do good, not do bad, so he can get back out there. Yeah, I never understand yeah. that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, that's the leadership that we need from the players, and um, it, it, it should not all fall on Scott Frost. A lot of it has to do with the lack of leadership that the players aren't demonstrating on the field, because it takes more than just talent. It takes character. It takes determination. It takes commitment. And so those are the players that I would like to see play at Nebraska. So, so we, we got one question we'll get to in a second. But sorry. So, so both, both Jimmy and I, Jimmy played hockey. I was a baseball guy. He's a big hockey and, guy. And, and competition was always one of those things where you, you wanted to be successful. You wanted to just, you wanted to be the starter. You wanted yeah. to be there. I can, honestly, I was never a, a 100% starter. I played about 50%. And I ended up stopping playing because I got to a point where my arm, messed up and I wasn't going to win the starting job so I, I stopped playing in general um, and, and Jimmy played a lot of years in hockey and it's just that, that competition is huge um, and, and you mentioned it as far as uh, you know, when you're coming in as a freshman sophomore, junior, doesn't matter what year you're yeah. at you keep competing because you never know when your chance is going to come up yeah. or when somebody's going to take your spot or when someone's going to take your spot um, you look at guys uh, and when we, went to, when we talked to Matt Verzal he mentioned I was, he's like, oh, the, you know, the times that I did play, but he was also a two-year national championship. He played a lot of games. He didn't, maybe not wasn't a starter. Yeah, he played he, in a lot of games. But he played in a lot starters. of games, and he played two positions, and he also mentioned um, their practices on Fridays. He's like, we don't wear pads, but you were still getting hit. Yeah, man. You were still, amazing. guys were still yeah. hitting each other because that mentality was there. You were yeah. scared to go to practice. The games were easy because you were so scared to go to practice. Um, that was kind of how it was when I played hockey, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so one question here. So weight room competitions. Uh, so, again, people are talking about under T.O. So you played for uh, Solich, who probably took a lot of what T.O., that yeah. mentality, into his practices, into the weight room. Um, so wasn't there weight room competitions for who was the strongest? 
back when it's T.O. in the straight cups. You mentioned you won it. Yeah. Well, was that a competition or just something you just happened to be the best? Uh, I mean, we competed unintentionally, but yet we pushed, like, we pushed each other. So, like, you know, for me to get 315, someone was like, hey, I'm going to get it too. And I was like, hey. Add ten more pounds on there. So I mean, so just that. And guys are pushing it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it was more of that competitive. Or cheering you on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it was friendly. Like we pushed each other. We wanted to be the best, but I mean, it was friendly. And so of course, you know, for me to be the lift of the year, you know, I had to. I mean, I became the lift of the year because there were other players that pushed me, other players that spotted me, other players that said, hey. You didn't get 500 this week, but man, you're going to get it next week. And so we had each other's back, but we pushed one another. I mean, it was that friendly competition. Um, I mean, that's where it starts. I mean, you become a man in the weight room. <laughs> and so then you carry that over to the field, all yeah. the power cleaning, and then you knock somebody down or you pancake somebody. All of that starts in the weight room. And so prior to... Scott Frost, you know, to hear that, and and I think even when Scott, players not going to, you know, going to the weight room, not going to classes, and, yeah. and this and yeah. that, I mean, like, you know, for players not to even have a commitment to the weight room. No. Mike Riley, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> throw it out there. Just gonna throw it out there. Yeah, so that commitment to the weight room is definitely key to seeing players perform. I think we're getting back on track on that in that department. Yeah, it, 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 that, that culture, I think Scott's building that culture that he wants to build. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you're seeing more and more players like an Adrian Martinez who he's kind of up and down. Yeah. And he had a great freshman year, really regressed. He gained some weight sophomore year. Just last year, you saw the weight down. The rushing game was better. The passing game was down. Yeah. So I think this next year, hopefully, we see a little bit of all of it come together, like his freshman year. Um, and real quick, uh, Emma Feldman asks non-football question: Will I see you at work tomorrow? I'm guessing she's <laughs> your coworker. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought, I thought, I thought she was. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's, that's, funny. Funny. <laughs> that's really uh, a good funny. question. How, so, how, yo, how did she find us? That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So so. <laughs> Guess yeah, that's a guess. So shout out to Emma. She <laughs> she works at the foundation. She is our friendly, okay. smiley face. As soon as someone uh, walks into um, our, our building, uh, unfortunately, we're all not um, working yeah. full capacity. But Emma, yes, I will be in the office <laughs> in the morning. It is Thursday. I mean, she looks like she's smiling her profile picture here. Yeah. So yeah, yeah good. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, Jimmy, what what questions do you have for? Some more in here before we uh, get close I mean, to we've off talked about a lot of stuff. I'm not sure I have anything um, I, that I'd like to ask. Yeah, I got, I got another one. So this next year, we're looking at, as Tom mentioned on our show, I don't know if you saw it, but he is, he's very much on board that Scott Frost's first year was really only maybe a half year at most, because he wasn't really on before that first signing period. Yeah. So we had to kind of kick it in gear really fast. So he's really on two, two and a half years at most that he's been really ingrained in the program. So this is his first full year with all his recruits ready to go. What are your expectations for this next year? We have a tough schedule. Tough schedule. Uh, again, we play the usual Ohio State because for some reason we play yeah. them every year. We have Oklahoma on our schedule. And Norman. And Norman. Um, Oklahoma, we saw what they could do the last five, six years. We saw, you know, they're still... Uh, they're better than Texas now. They're a so what are your, caliber team. What are your thoughts moving into this next year? We have some hype. We have some talent. Yeah. You look excited to talk about this. Well, yeah, because what are you because all of the games that you guys pointed out, these tough games, playing the best brings out your best, yeah. right? I mean, so when you know you're going into Oklahoma, like you should, like for me mentally. I'm about to bring out my best if this is like 100% agree. Yeah, yeah. So, I feel like you're going to take me out. Like, yeah. Hey, 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 go if you want. <laughs> you know, the majority of our games are home games. Yep. To be honest, I see three games that will be tough games. Yep. And, and that's I see three games that are tough games, but they're not impossible games. Yep. 
if Nebraska can take care of their business right now, off season, practice mentally, short term memory. I mean, that's something else that Jack Stark taught us. That's a good. Let's let go of last year. It's a good verb. Short term memory, and let's focus on moving forward. Martinez, short term memory. Uh, running back position, everyone who's transferred, short term memory. Focus on who we got on the team now, and let's focus on what we're going to do next. You know, um, you know, I'm a big Gallup strength spine yep, person, yep, yeah. and there's this uh, term called next team. Yep. So getting excited about the future. Uh, what am I looking forward to next year? What am I looking forward to next month? What am I looking forward to next season? And so having that next in mindset helps you to put all of your energy moving forward. Not mad. That's not, not that's kind of how we are as Nebraska fans. I know a lot of people that are that yeah. same way. Some people are super negative, but I'm always <laughs> that. All right, I'm super excited for the next, shoot, even the next game. You know, we play Rutgers in a last game of the season that, you know, and I was still excited for the game. Yeah. So if the guys can be that excited for well, the game. And, and, and Micah mentions here, too, like an average defense will keep us in the game against the OU. Well, and our defense is going to be pretty good. Being a defensive guy, we got a lot of defense returning this year. Like, as a Husker fan now, you're smiling like, yeah, I feel like your dimples are reaching Whoa. your ears. <laughs> so, you're so excited. So, so you know, because I'm a former defensive player, I I do focus and expect more from the defense. Uh, we need some speed on their defense. You know, if they had 3-4 when I was in Nebraska, oh, man, I would have killed it. <laughs> <laughs> However, I would have killed it because of my speed and, and, and my position, kind of my yeah. physique, so to speak. If they're going to run at 3-4, you got to have that, that – Des Moines Adams, Von Miller, you know, kind of that kind of guy, yeah. Randy Gregory, that's going to hit that edge, or he can also play linebacker. So we need some speed. We need some nasty linebackers. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I mean, I'm talking like dirty, nasty. I mean, like Carlos Polk. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> tight, you know, tight, nasty. Jay Foreman. Jay Foreman. Yeah. Nasty. nasty. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah. yeah. And then the defensive backs, um, you know. What do you think about Kane Taylor and oh, yeah. William, or, uh, Deontay Williams? Like, this uh, like those guys are hard hitters. Only losing Boodle, so. so. So to me, that's leadership. You know, for them to come back, for them to have that experience, now they need to use their role to be role models of, of what other players need to demonstrate. And that's bringing their A game. Uh, coming to practice prepared, giving the hundred and ten percent, watching game film, getting ready on Thursday, Friday, staying off social media. I get it. O Street is still O Street, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. when we're in season, man, sometimes we, we have to lose to win. Yeah. And, and and when I say that, lose some of those uh, habits, you know, lose some of those circles. Uh, Friends that are no good on the season lose some of the uh, the Facebook time and Twitter time lose some of that downtown time and and all the other stuff. Let's lose some of those things that won't help us so we can win. And maybe spend more time with some of the younger guys and get them up to speed and yeah, get them so that they're the next generation of guys that'll be you know in there. In their shoes. I, I will say, I think three guys I'm looking forward to this next year Will Honus, Jojo Doman, Cam Taylor Britt. Jojo Doman. And, and, and I guess I, I could probably put Deontay Williams and this Muke in there. I mean, you have a handful of guys that, talent wise, you see it on the field. Yeah. And, and you see this Muke, more than anything else, this Muke brings the speed. Yeah. He's got the speed, he's got the hard hitting, he's got the heart. Cam Taylor, just, he will win every battle you give him. There's a reason why nobody knows about him as far as the NFL is because nobody throws to him. Yeah. He's one of those shutdown corners. You see it on Dawson and on, on, on uh, Penn State and on a lot a lot of – Ohio State was a different, a different game with Ohio State. We just got kind of demolished. That was just a tough game. Yeah. A lot of they, well, those guys are just studs. But every other game throughout the season, shutdown corner. Yeah. Boodle was fantastic. I mean – we have such a great defense, and I feel like we can leverage that defense. Yeah. 
to provide the offense efficiency that we need. And I, hopefully, and I think that gave us that energy to win the games that we did last year. Yeah. Against the Penn State, when Ben Stilley got that sack on the very last play of the game, and that was huge, and I think our defense really leveraged the team into a different level, and I hope that carries over to next year. So our offense really picks up the speed with our new offensive players. Our size on wide receiver is one of the best. Uh, bringing Cochran in at uh, left, left tackle yep. um, is going to be Hymas. huge. Yeah. Replace the Hymas. And I think our young offensive line has had made so much improvement last year. We're going to see the difference on the field this year. And I'm, so excited, I'm excited right now. I'm just <laughs> talking about it. Again, it's like yeah. we're in February, and we have so much time before actual game games start. But So, so we've been together for an hour and a half now. Yes, yep. And so <laughs> – you guys have gotten to know me. I'm going to ask you guys a question, and if you get it right, I will give you my hat and sign it. You have told me who you're excited to see next year. I'm going to give both of you one chance to tell me who you think I'm looking forward to. I'm trying to get this right. I'll you go first. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> ah! <Come on. laughs> So he can get it wrong, or, yep, yeah, or, or, yeah. or if he gets it right, he gets the hat sign. Who do you think that I'm excited to see? Oh, based on you getting to know me tonight, I'm going first. Actually, you are sorry. Going, you go first. I'm gonna say Payne on the defense because Payne he no, brings no. the pain. No. Oh man, he has been no. okay. Let's, th- let's focus on him though. He has been a stud in his early yeah. year. Yeah, of playing on Nebraska, yeah. he's one of those guys that really showed out this last year that I don't think. I think people are excited about him. I think he brought more pain, if you will, yeah. um, than a lot of people expected, though. I mean, yeah. he, you could see those dreads flying around, and he was coming in there making hits. Uh, he was excited to watch. Yeah. I mean, I've got, a, I've got a couple guys in mind, but uh, I'm going to be wrong, but I'll go with. It's going to be an offensive guy. <laughs> Come on, give me a little hint. I'll give you a hint. Defense. Okay, I was gonna say Ty Robinson, but no. no. Uh, Who is it? Who do you think? Cam. Number ninety-eight. Number ninety-eight. Casey Rogers. Casey Rogers. Oh my gosh, that was my second choice. Casey Rogers. Number ninety-eight. Come on. Casey Rogers. Number ninety-eight. I liked him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. He has been one of those guys. That oh, was. I didn't even think that he was 98. So, Casey Rogers. That's... So we, we went to the spring game two years ago, and I remember watching Rogers. He came on the sideline. He got injured in the spring game a little bit. He had to come get some work, and we were right over by where he came, and I'm like, man, that guy, he's a big guy. Rod never heard of the guy. Yeah. But when we saw him in the spring game, I was like, gonna he's say making a difference. Then during, he had like five pass breakdowns. Like He was just... He balled out. Hey, love the guy. You know, good for you. So um, I met him when he was a freshman. Good guy. Uh, yeah. We we stay in touch. Uh, he he nice tr- he truly wants to represent the number ninety eight plus man of character. He's a leader. He's committed. So that's who I'm looking forward to seeing this year. But you know what? Had a hat oh, okay. <laughs> but but because I love the Husker decor. I'm going to still give you guys this hat, yeah, nice and I'm going to sign it, and you guys can wear it or you can hang it up. But, hey, man, I just appreciate the opportunity to be on this show just for oh, really appreciate it. listeners to get to know me or, you know, just to learn about how I was when I played, to, to hear about, you know, uh, how our mindset was going into the Rose Bowl. I still can't give you any answers <laughs> of why we lost against Colorado. Uh, but I can tell you that um, – there's no place like Nebraska, man. My, my experience at Nebraska, uh, hands down, uh, has made me to be who I am today. One of the best experiences. And then, you know, since the country is, is I mean, it's still somewhat divided and there's, there's so much hate and just division. Um, I can say firsthand, you know, because of Coach Osborne, his leadership, coaches, teammates, being in Nebraska made me feel like I belong. Diverse, inclusive, and um, I have the heart that I have today because of my experience at Nebraska. Well, we really appreciate you coming on. Um, 
This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's so hard to end the show because I, know, I, mean, yes. I think we just keep talking for hours, and uh, this has been a lot of fun. So, again, we, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you uh, just showing up and, and being that extrovert that, that you are yeah, now. now. You may be an introvert, but you're an extrovert now. And, and again, just that, that very first day that I talked to you, I was like, this guy just, I felt like I've known him for years. It's kind of like how Brandon, He did tell me that. And that's kind of like how Brandon Kenny was when he first came oh, on the show. It's like, 100%. hey, we're giving hugs. It's like, holy yeah. crap, like you're, we've known you for a long time. But yeah. it just, it's really nice to be able to get to know uh, other Husker players and just the effect that – the love that we have for Husker football as, you know, adults now. We, I mean, <laughs> you know, we, other people still have that love. Yeah. It's just, we it's, lived it's close it's when we were growing up and we – you know, watch games together <laughs> and yep. go out and throw the football around at halftime. My yep. mom would have to come drag us in and say, the game's back on, yep. you know? Yeah. But we were up by so many points at halftime that we were, yeah. you, you know. can't just pause it and keep playing again now anymore. So, um, but anyways, we do appreciate it. So we've taken up plenty of your time. That's right. So again, we appreciate it and we're going to go ahead and sign off. We'll get our music going here. Everybody that joined us today, thank you very much. Appreciate we didn't get your question today. Uh, we apologize. I think we answered just about everything. If we didn't get your answer question or your question answered, I think we talked about it earlier on the show. So again, we appreciate it. Have a good night. And again, I'm Matt. I'm Jimmy. We'll see you next time. And Des Moines Adams. Thank you, Des Moines. Appreciate, appreciate it. it.